Um, I realized we, we sort of moved from the naked people to closer to fashion again. But um, what drew me to your work was a very, very unique perspective on the shape of the body. And I'm not saying much more. You're introducing yourself a little bit. Um, enjoy it. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Luis. And thank you, Sven, for having me. Um, yeah, I am a self-taught photographer. Um, my background is as a dancer. I've been dancing professionally for about 16 years, and for the past three years, I've been focusing on photography. Um, what I'm gonna show today are two different series. One is a completed series, and the other one is my most present and current series, which is ongoing. And I'll show excerpts of the first part of that. Um, this first series is called Patina. Um, I've titled it Patina, Patina being how certain materials change over time because of um, when they oxidize. So um, the main focus of most of my photos is the body and how using um, specific materials can navigate um, identity and also express um, resistance in a way. Um, these pictures, this is patina. Uh, the, the bodies are placed uh, in the forefront of the, of, the, of the frame. And I've taken the idea of patina, but transfer that to use one emotional state and put it in the body. And in a way, make an archive of how, oops, how the body how that emotional state changes over time, like patina does. Um, the figures are large, and you can argue that it, they are hiding in plain sight. Um, but at the same time, there's an impossibility of hiding when you're so present. So um, they lent themselves to no time or place because I was interested in, the, in timelessness for this. So um, yeah, so the first is patina. This is the first picture. So there are seven images in these. I was interested in how the emotional state sort of morphs after a while. Um, Um, so, in an installation, these figures are life size or larger than life because I'm interested in how the, as a viewer, you also are participating as a spectator rather than being a passive spectator. Um, also, a lot of people ask me why you cannot see who's under the pictures. I, for me, it's a question of identity. I think that, um, by questioning the identity, it makes it, you're actively strengthening it because it's not a fixed position. So you're constantly questioning and by questioning, you're maybe answering your own questions. Um, this is Patina. The second series that I will show is a ongoing project, as I said before, I'm calling it Spectacular Home. Um, the series was shot between Dominican Republic and Haiti. My family's from the Dominican Republic. And um, I had an interest in returning there because it's something that is very much, I, I refer to it as something of, of the past, but it is very much present in my experience. And I really wanted to return and um, focus on, there, because, due, due to the history of colonization and white supremacy, a lot of Dominicans, although we share the island with Haiti, which is a different country, a lot of Dominicans do not identify with their blackness. And I, I wanted to reclaim that as a Dominican man. Um, and so 
this is the first part of a series, and I've tried, what, I, what I've done is I've, um, I've used the birthday party as the starting point for the series. Because in the birthday party, there's a lot of cultural signifiers that are passed down. And uh, there, I wanted to create a sense of chaos, and which I find reflects this, um, this feeling that you have in a celebration where you sometimes are the center of attention. And I, my interest was to embody the celebration. So you're not at the celebration, you are the celebration. You're not eating cake, you are cake. Um, and so, I will go with that. So I've used different materials that are very present in the island to create the chaos in the body. And so all of the photos are the body. Um, you can interpret them as you want. Um, for me, I wanted to create these sort of monumental figures. Um, this is one. Tell me if I'm going too slow, but. <laughs> this is icing from the cake. As a photographer, I was also, I really love the light that I was getting there as opposed to what I get in Berlin, which is where I live. Um, And that was that. Um, I plan to, my plan is to continue with a, with a second part. I, I realized when I first started the series, I wasn't sure it was going to be a continuous project, but I feel like I just started upon something that is probably going to be, I don't want to say lifelong, but it definitely is going to be a continuation because I feel like I've sort of gone back to a seed of where I come from and being a person um, of color and being in Europe now for 16 years, I feel like I'm very far away from that, what, that which um, raised me. And um, yeah, and I feel that um, it's very important to me. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Wait for one second. It's like yeah. just two two small questions that I had um, initially. Mm -hmm. um, for the Patina series, mm -hmm. the models you're yeah. working with are yeah. they dancers? Um, those are my friends. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I tried. They're, they're, those are the people that were most accessible to me because yeah. they're around me. But uh, and I use another thing is being a dancer. I I I'm not necessarily interested in making dance photography. I, used, I like to use the information that I have of the body because it's what I have, and I find information is information. And I use that information to direct the people that I'm working with, whether they are models or not. And I find sometimes when they're dancers, when they're, whether they're dancers or not, and sometimes when they're dancers, it can be quite easy because we speak similar language, but at the same time, I find when I use people who have no, I, I mean, it always helps to have people who are physical in some way, who have a, a body awareness. But I find, also, I, I find it also quite interesting when they don't because my directions leave, uh, in front of me something happens that I was really not expecting. And it becomes many times much more interesting than what, you know, yeah. than what I was planning. So. I, I was curious about the, the conversations that you would have mm -hmm. with them. You know, how much do you direct and what, what kind of instructions do you give? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, very often, 
I wonder how, I mean, we all know it's this like stereotype, you know, like male fashion photographer directs a model, mm -hmm. tells her what to do, like no understanding of what it feels like being mm -hmm. in that body. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you were, I mean, a dancer talking to a dancer mm -hmm. must be a very different conversation. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, I, I think I've also, um, now working primarily in photography, I've taken for granted um, how much information as a dancer you gain from your body. But I also find, but I also realize that, you know, people who are non-dancers, they also have a lot of information. It's just different. Mm -hmm. And I, I, find, um, I find it really beautiful when you direct somebody who is a little bit lost. And I'm also lost, and together we're sort of creating this thing and going somewhere that might not be the initial um, idea for what I was planning, but it turns into something else. And the, uh, also back to the, the first Platina series, the, I mean, the cloth or, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it was clothing or? It's some, it some, uh, some like fabric yeah. that was draped. So how did, you, how did you work with the material? Like um, hmm. I, I definitely wanted a sense of something that's anonymous. Mm. Um, because although they come off as statues, I do not want them to be static figures. Mm. I, it's really important for me that um, the viewer has some kind of emotional response from it. And I'm not talking about me dictating what the emotional response is. But that you feel, even if you don't understand what's happening, that there's something that it triggers you inside where you're like, you know. And, and I felt that the clothes had, with the black and the white and also the, almost the flesh color salmon, mm. had a sort of like a clean palette, you know, where, um, not a clean palette, but it was more neutral. And I felt the, with the black and white, there was a contrast where I can play with the body and I can mm. play with the shapes. And the, the, the salmon color added a sort of like an extra pop that I needed for it. So. Super. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Please, I'd better